Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back uh, for, um, this is actually just a Get Fit With Me series. Also kind of like a highlight of um, things. Um, so, but um, I kind of, what I was getting at with this video today is that um, I kind of want to give you a highlight of how the weekend has went so far. So this, I'm actually going to be posting this the same day that I'm filming it, which is rare because your girl normally films ahead of time. But um, it is Memorial Day weekend. Um, today is Sunday. Uh, the weather kind of sucks right now with it being Sunday. Um, like a lot. <laughs> it's not really good. I wish it was better, but it's no boy no at this moment. But, um, yeah, right now, um, what my plans are, um, for the weekend is I'm actually getting massaged shortly today. And it's because I did my soldier field 10 miler. Yes, your girl did it. Your girl did it. So for those who haven't been following, I injured myself while on my trip to Puerto Rico. Um, I rolled my ankle. I thought it was like not that bad of a roll. I kind of, you know, downplayed it by like a lot and it actually was not as good. Like it was, it was, it was a bigger problem than I thought. So my running unfortunately has suffered as a result. Um, I've been trying to maintain weight. Um, I have been doing a kind of decent job here and there for the most part. I think I have been. Um, but again, the running's been the struggle and I knew I had this race coming up to the point where I actually have a, had a 5k a couple weeks ago or probably a couple weeks after I got back from Puerto Rico that I was like, okay, I'll do that. And I was like, the day, the day before I picked up my packet, as I was walking to pick up my packet going up the stairs um, at a fleet feet, I realized I just need to pick up my packet. <laughs> I am not going to do this race. Like it, it, it was painful for me to still walk. So um, not horribly painful, but enough where I noticed something is off. And if it bothers you walking, you should not be running. I mean, that's common sense, right? And it's crazy because in my 20s, I would have just still did it. Like, I, the way I just was like, my body's resilient. It'll figure itself out. And I, I just can't do that anymore. That's one of those things that I'm not going to do anymore. And I also want to make sure I'm running, you know, in my 80s. I want to keep running in my 80s. Like, I want to be running for a super long time. Um, and so because of that, you know, I couldn't do the race and uh, pardon me because it is about to rain today, my allergies, you know, they're doing what they do because I'm allergic to mold for those who don't know that, um, which is why, how I had some of the things that happened, <laughs> um, at the, as the aftermath of Puerto Rico happened and side note. It almost is completely gone on this side. Um, I still have some stuff left on the other side, though, when it comes to my shiner that I got from doing from Puerto Rico. But anyway, neither here nor there. I've been trying to do a whole bunch of eye treatments to get rid of it. But <laughs> anyway, so yeah, my point was I wasn't be able to. I did not get any long runs in. The longest run I did was the week of the race um, on Wednesday. I actually ran five miles, but that's the longest I've ran um, since, I don't even know. I think before Puerto Rico, I got in six miles, but then after that, I never got in anything else. And that was the beginning of April, which is not, that doesn't work, right? So anyway, let's rewind before that. Um, I am gonna um, post pictures of things and how things have went so friday was kind of a crazy day for me because actually friend. sorry my friend we'll call her um negative split queen yes and that way she knows who, who, who i'm talking about so negative split queen came here and visit me um the same friend that um stayed at my place during the chicago marathon weekend i invited her while she was staying here in october like hey 
you should do this race with me. It'll be so much fun. And it's like an anniversary year, which it was. It was a 20th anniversary of the Soldier Field 10 Miler race. And it's a race I do every year. And fast forward, I'm going to say real quick, I know a lot of my friends had some mixed reviews and didn't really like it. It was their first race, first time doing the race. And they didn't like the start. I get that. Um, I wasn't a fan of the start either, to be completely honest. But I will say this, um, I do the race every year for multiple reasons. Number one is kind of one of the first major Chicago races I did since moving to Chicagoland. So it kind of has a nostalgia feel for it. So no matter how crappy it's organized or it's not quite right, it's one of those things I'm like, I'm going to always do the race. There's always a race that runners have that isn't set up the best that people just do anyway and it's kind of part of the problem of how the race doesn't get better and unfortunately this is the one for me like that's it's just what it is i'm going to do the race every year like i've always done the race and actually past three years their shirts are amazing so and they have like honestly the best shirts out of all the races like their shirts quality is so good that I'm going to keep doing the race. That's just what it is. And they always have fun designs for the race too. So even before the shirts got to the way they are now, they always had cool, fun designs that other races don't have. It's always Chicago based, but it's always a cool, fun design. So as a result, I'm always going to do the race. I'm never going to not do this race. So that's what it is for that. I'll get to that a little bit later on as we talk about the race more, but let's talk about what led up to the race. So negative split cream came Friday. And um, as she was on her way here, and I was coordinating all that. And by the way, I'm doing this all throughout the work week and stuff. And um, side note, side note, so random, random side note. So I don't know if I said anything, but I kind of been trying to put myself out there a little bit more as far as being social and stuff. And also work on my fitness and all that at the same time. And I, uh, I went back on a dating app and I should just like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to delete it. I'm deleting it. <laughs> just FYI, I'm deleting it. Cause I don't know why I go back and forth and do that. Not even worth it. Not worth my time, not worth any of it. And plus I have too much going on. I am the queen of trying to overly juggle things. But anyway, I just had to call that. I had to throw that out there because I just felt like I was getting pulled in a thousand directions, and a lot of it was my own creep. My, it was my own. It was for my own. It was because of me. I felt that way. It was a me thing, not uh, everyone doing that type of thing. Um, anyway, let me know if anyone else is like that. Like you decide, like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it all at the same time. <laughs> and then you're like, why do I feel overwhelmed? Oh yeah, you created that. <laughs> You did that. Anyway, so she is getting here. And so that day I was trying to work on something with work. And then while working on something with work, I also knew I had my mammogram that afternoon. So I went and got that done. And then also too, I had to come, of course, try to clean around the house a little bit because, you know, I have cats and Anyone who has pets, you already know there's going to be fur hair everywhere and you don't want to over clean because that's, if anyone is, has allergies, it actually makes it worse. If, if you do clean, you should probably clean like, a, I would say three or four days in advance so that the, um, allergens are not and the cat dandruff is not, um, just like floating around everywhere. You, you, you want to plan accordingly with that. So that's kind of the other reason why I like, I cleaned a little bit, but not too much. Cause I didn't want the hour. I didn't want the allergens to be floating around in the air, you know, even though I knew she was only staying for a day, but point still stood. Um, so after that, um, I went directly packet pickup <laughs> and as I went to the packet pickup, I know this is a car right behind me. I mean, right in front of me. And I'm like, that's it. Indi so for those who are not from Indiana, because people who are not from India don't know this, I feel like, or don't have family members from Indiana. So Indiana's license plates are slightly different. We have our county numbers on the license plate. 
And unless you live in Indiana, you don't usually know what the county numbers are. And the particular county that I'm originally from, along with Negative Split Queen, who is coming to visit, it's a number. It's a certain number. And yes, there's a lot of Indiana plates that come from Chicago, that come to Chicago often, but that's normally the northwest part of Indiana and not northeast where I'm from. So if you see a northeast or anything that's outside of like northwest, you know, they're they're it, they're not here normally you know <laughs> northwest people usually that are have indiana plates they sometimes work in chicago or something you know because it's just i mean you go over the bridge and you're in indiana <laughs> i mean that's what it is for those who are not familiar with the geography that is indiana versus chicago and so i always even when I tell people I'm originally from Indiana, I always specifically say not Northwest because people always make the assumption that it's Northwest because, I mean, a lot of people are or do the commute or whatnot. But like, so whenever I'm explaining I haven't seen my family for a while, they're like, why? You know, because that's usually someone's first questions. Like, why haven't you seen your family for a while? I'm like, no, for me, it's a three hour drive. It's not <laughs> a 45 minute drive. Get my point? Okay. I, I feel like I need to preface that. But anyway, so she is right be in front of me. Because I figured it out because of the, the, the county number. I was like, and then the car. I was like, this thing is flickering. And so we're, we're driving in the parking garage. And as we're driving down the parking garage, she's like kind of confused because, you know, she doesn't, she's not familiar. She hasn't had to do any of this before or anything like that. So she's like, I don't know. And so I'm like, I called her. I was like, let me just call her. So I call her and she's like, hello. I'm like, look to your right. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, I didn't mean to time it, but like, so it was cool because we were able to do get our packets and stuff together. And also she mentioned she wanted to go shopping too, because where the packet picker was at was like a shopping center. So she can go get her shopping done if she wanted to do that, which was perfect. Cause that allows me time to come back home and get my car parked, um, on the street so that she can use my parking space because I have a private parking space that whenever people visit, I have them park there so they don't have to worry about parking on the street or street parking because, you know, who wants to deal with that and the worry of is my car safe, all that. Like, if you're not from here, that's, a, you know, a legitimate worry. I, you know, I've lived here now for, well, I lived in Chicago land for about 10 years now. So, I'm kind of, I feel, I feel, I'm starting to feel official, if you will. I don't, I, the, the Indiana side of me feel, I feel like it's like, oh, that's kind of fading. Cause I feel like I've almost lived here adult wise for adult life wise. It's been equal. Like I've lived in Indiana for most of my adulthood and now we're transitioning and now I've lived in Chicago for most of my really coming of age adulthood, like 30s on i've lived in chicago land so yeah anyway next so okay after that we get a packet i hurry up and come back up and then we decide on food so prior to this thursday i actually sent her a list because she said she wanted pizza the day before i'm like perfect that's fine um so i sent her a list of pizza places that i recommend they're nice or close by so we don't have to go too far away and then I also sent her ideas for after the race for brunch because I figured brunch is who doesn't like brunch to me, in my opinion, if you don't like brunch, I think you might be a serial killer. I don't understand someone who doesn't like brunch. I am not even talking about the drinking and brunching. I mean, just like breakfast and lunch together is amazing. And you know what else is also amazing? Breakfast and dinner, Brenner. Anyway, breakfast or anything breakfast food is top notch stop playing with me I fight fight someone else for over that um but plus i love eggs so i mean i'm gonna love all that but actually i love all breakfast food now i think about it anyway so <laughs> I'm, I'm hopping on and off here but my point was i sent her a list of things and so we figured out what we're going to do for the food um for friday so we actually end up going to this cool restaurant um 
that I've, you know, I'm familiar with, but because we wait till last minute to decide, I knew the reservation thing was not going to happen on the Friday night, uh, especially holiday week and Friday night. So we got to go. No problem. That's not what we're here for. We're going to probably do more of the venturing off on Saturday, which we did. And so we got to go split a pizza, had some muscles to start off with chef's kiss. Great. Okay. Off to getting ready for race morning and then the race. So the, um, race morning. One of the things I did to prepare, um, and one of the things I'm very fortunate to have is I have a coffee machine. And I feel like most people, if you have a modern coffee machine, you have the option of having a timer set up for it. So we had the timer set up for it, for the um, coffee machine to make our coffee first thing in the morning. So we can like hurry up, get ready and get out of here because we needed to be at the race. Um, we tried to get to the race around six o'clock. Um, so we had time to, because the race start starts at seven and the corral, um, AM by the way. Um, and then the corral, the thing that you have to go in to get into the race to get started that closed at six forty. So that meant we had to get up, you know, pretty early. So we got up around four fifty. Cause by the way, soldier field is like, um, location wise, it's, pretty much kind of in the south it's in the south loop pretty much it's um technically it's yeah it's the south loop i mean yeah it's the south loop <laughs> it's in the south loop which is not close um it's closer race more like early in the morning because there's no traffic on um like um deuces deuce Stabo lake shore drive that's what's called today for those who are going there, but I, no one, no one local here calls it that. I call it LSD. Um, so Lakeshore, Lakeshore Drive, <laughs> but I just call it LSD. Like, okay. So I was like, okay, LSD is not going to have, um, is not going to have, um, a lot of traffic race morning. So that was going to be a non-issue. And then also for this race, one of the things I do like about this race, cause typically races that are like down, like in the loop, or anywhere like that. For those who are not familiar, the loop is the downtown area. Um, and it's called the loop because of the L. Um, and so then it's kind of set up that way. So South loop is South of the loop. Anyway. Um, so, um, what was I getting at with that? Oh, I was saying that I knew that the traffic wasn't going to be bad. And the reason why we drive, I drive with this race and typically with other races, you can't really do that for those who are not familiar is because other races in Chicago, typically, um, it's the pain in the butt for parking. But since this is at soldier field, the parking is like immaculate and you, there's plenty of parking. Um, because it's Soldier Field where the Bears play and also where the Chicago Fire plays. So you're, it, it's fine. Um, <laughs> so that was, that was a non-issue. already decided I was going to be driving race morning because she drove to get our food for dinner the night before. And then I was like, so that way the parking thing would not be much of an issue because about time we'll get back. Um, you're going to be on your way out and I'll just park back in my spot. So, um, because my friend was only staying, um, until like three ish. Um, and that's kind of what ended up happening actually. So anyway, we get ready, we go and race morning, we're both type a like a mother and we're kind of annoying each other. And then we both took a pause. Like, are we both type a each other right now? And, and then, um, Mega Splitwing's like, yeah. <laughs> And they were like, who's driving the bus? I was like, I don't know. Are you driving the bus? It's just like, seems like I'm driving the bus. Or wait, maybe you're driving the bus. I was like, I don't know which one of us is driving this bus. Apparently both were trying to drive the same freaking bus. And it was not. <laughs> we figured, we snapped out of it right away. Because I think part of it was once we got there, we both had to use the restroom. So we're like, okay, okay. Restroom, 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 restroom. And for those who are runners, y'all get this. But for those who are not, let me give you a little bit of tea. 
So we both used the restroom before we left. And the race for us to get to where we got to was only 15 minute drive. But race day, you get so, so nervous. You get race jitters. No matter how many races you do or for how many years you've done this. Megan the Split Queen's been running for a long time. Like, she's been running since like middle school. Okay? And she's and, and she still has these jitters. And I do too. And I've been running since, you know, 2009. I'm going, I'm about to be on, I'm getting close to the 15 year mark for how long I've been running. So it, it's just jitters that happens. So anyway, that's part of it is you have to use a restroom multiple times before the race starts. And um, also too, a random other side note is I have a phobia of public restrooms and running is the only thing that stops me from caring about that. If it's running related, it's like that weird tick that is associated with my weird feelings when it comes to public restrooms goes away and it's going to happen. I, I, I gotta go. But any other time, I will hold it and wait till I get to like my actual restroom that's like not a public restroom because I don't know why. I well, I do know why. Something happened when I was a little kid, and it just it, it psychologically has always been a thing. But anyway, <laughs> we're not gonna get into that. That's a whole other thing. So we're both just like, okay, restroom, 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 restroom. Okay, so we meet here after this. I was like, no, no, no Paula. Uh, I mean, no, 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 negative split queen. No, 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 negative split queen. Well, let me over here. And then she's like, why? I'm like, because when you say this, that thing's long. I don't know where you mean exactly. Let's choose a landmark that has an obvious landmark that I can't miss you. And she's like, oh, oh, oh okay, okay, okay. And I'm like, and also too, in my head, I'm thinking, you don't live here. I do. <laughs> So why, how are you going to tell me where to meet at when you're not even familiar with where you're at? I'm the one who's familiar with where I'm at. I've done this race for, I've done this race like eight times. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and so we laugh. We get a good key key out of the fact that we were both being team too much. And we, that's when we called it out. Like, are we both being team too much right now? We're like, yeah. Both of us were like, yeah. I was like, okay, let's, let's stop it. And it immediately after we used the restroom, we were good. It was like, <laughs> cause we're like, nah, 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 nah. two people who are high energy, who are race morning type people. It was, it was wild. It was funny. Um, you, and maybe the way I'm describing it doesn't make any sense, but like for those, if you know, you know, but anyway, next. So I know it is really storming out. I don't know if you heard that, but that was like thunder. It was like, Rrr. but, um, so, okay. We take some pictures before, which, uh, and then after that, then it's time for us to go where we need to go. And Negative Split Queen was still being type A. She's, she's like, are we going the right way? I was like, yes. And she's like, this isn't the color of our bib, is it? I was like, yes. We have one color bib. The 10K runners have another color bib. The 10K runners do not start till later. So everyone that's going this way are all us. And she's like, okay. I was, I was just like, Oh man, those jitters be jittering. And it cracked me up because the reason why it was funny to me, because um Megan Split Queen and I were like a lot alike. Like a lot alike. <laughs> so when she's doing all this, I'm like, oh, this is such a mirror. <laughs> it literally was like I'm the way I it's one of those things, like, sometimes you don't realize how you act until you see someone else act exactly like you. And I'm like, this is exactly how I act when I do racist with people. And it probably drives them nuts. <laughs> so for those who have ever done a race with me, I am sorry. But I'm not. Because I found it entertaining personally when, when Mega Split Queen was acting this way. Because I was just like, oh my gosh. We're the same person. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
And this is probably why we've always gotten along. Like I've known that he was split queen for years, like years. Like I think I met, I met her in 2012. I, so it's been over 10 years. But anyway, <laughs> so anyway, we get to the corral. We say goodbye because if you, based off of what, what they named her for this video, She's in Corral A, okay? Like, she's, it's Elite Corral A. She's in Corral A. <clears throat> Much faster than me. Also used to be my coach when I was trying to get faster. Um, an unpaid coach, by the way. She's, because we're friends. But you know what I mean? Like, she basically would coach me and helped me get to my running goals when I was, like, trying to, when I was running a lot more competitively. Just put it that way. I haven't been running competitively for some time. But I think I do want to try to get back to it. And when I do, I did joke with her, but she kind of knew I was like joking like slightly. I'm, I'm, I'm joking, but kind of serious. I might move to Indiana for the summer just to be under her coaching tutelage to get, get it back together. Just put it that way. Um, because when I ran with her and another friend of ours who also has a coaching back, running coaching background, I was, Stop playing. <laughs> I was I was winning the age groups all the time. Whether it was a small race or a, a decent size race, I was winning the age groups. So anyway. Um, so we get to the corral. And then when I get to my corral, my other friends are in my corral with me. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> the friends that I'm going to introduce and I get a split queen to. So I was like, yes, my running group's here. We're good. It's going to be a fun race. Only The only thing I noticed, though, when I got in there, I was like, wait, this is not how I started last time. And I was like, there must have been an event or something that Soldier Field had going on. I didn't know what the event was, but I just felt like that's what was happening. And unfortunately, this is where I mentioned that people were not happy about it. I wasn't happy about it either. But this is one thing I will say and hope. Um, I am going to actually write on the survey about it um, when they do this, send the survey out. Is that one thing that's super annoying is that the race, this race, their lack of transparency of where the start is, is really annoying. Um, this is not the first time this has happened. This is maybe the third time this has happened. So two years ago, we started outside the soldier and then we never even finished in soldier, which I feel like a lot of people do the race because they want to run on the football field. You know, it's, it's a dual theme race. Like it's a theme race because it's a Memorial day race. Um, because, well, Soldier Field's also named for that reason too. For soldiers, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a quadruple, it's like a double, quadruple entendre going on, you know? It's for, it's, so that's the reason why the Memorial Day race happens, weekend race happens, because it's Soldier Field, and this is like to, you know, honor like veterans or whatever, right? Right. And then also, this is where the Bears play. So you also want to run on the field, <laughs> you know? So it's a dual thing. And it feels good to finish off running on the field. That feels good, especially after a longer run. So yeah. Anyway, so we start on the field, but we don't get to start the way we actually didn't start in the field. We lined up on, in the field this year and we started inside the tunnel, which was not good because the tunnel was narrow and it caused people once they start like running through the start line, people had to stop because it's narrow. Who wants to stop from running once you cross the start line and start walking right away? That's kind of a, that is a momentum killer. Um, now the people who are like, t like in the corrals, like a and B probably didn't have that problem, but the, you know, the further back the corrals are, you're going to have that problem because you're going to have run walkers or people who run slower paces. 
So that's not ideal at all. So that was the thing that was really annoying. Um, and unfortunately I had some friends, it was their first year doing the race and it turned them off a lot. And, um, as someone who has been speaking highly of this race, I was trying to explain that like, it's not like that every year, but the problem is I can't tell them how it's going to be because it's not consistent. Like, Every year it's something, it's something. Last year, the something actually worked out. So last year was, we started at Indian Soldier Field as we should, but we started in Soldier Field. Like the race started at the right spot. Um, and then the only difference was we did have a little bit of a tunnel stop, but it wasn't as bad as this year. This year's tunnel stop was really annoying because it wasn't the same tunnel and it was smaller and it was narrower it was a whole thing but this one um because i think the start and finish might have been in the same area now i think about it but anyway um the thing also that was kind of annoying what with it last year was they actually had to change a course the last minute because in the past we've always ran on like LSD, like the road, the southern part of the road. And then we got off and ran on the trail and went back. Now, last year and this year, we're running on the trail out and back. But that actually is a good thing because the trail has some shaded areas going out. LSD just on the road, there is no shade. And the way that road is, is kind of like a lighter road, like a concrete road. So like the sun, if it's a sunny day, the sun's reflecting on the road and going like this on you. And historically, that Saturday, a Memorial Day weekend, I would say for the past, every year I've lived here, minus last year and the year before that, has always been historically really warm. And really sunny. Last year was overcast, so like I actually killed the race. Last year I actually ran a really good time, and I wasn't even planning on doing that. I just did all right. But anyway, moving on. Okay, so the race itself. So once we got past that start, that was not good. Um it was really so it was a good race weather wise temperature wise except for it did start getting really 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 warm and one thing that i will say and this has been my feedback for years when it comes this race um they need more aid stations and um, I have friends that were not happy about their experience with the aid stations as well because apparently there were some that were abandoned. About time I was where I was at when I came to aid stations, I didn't have those problems. But, um, and this has been honestly a problem when it comes to a lot of races that are longer distance um, outside the Bank of America races. And I think that's what spoils a lot of us around here. The Bank of America races, for the most part, like, it's pretty seamless when it comes to the race experience. They have plenty of volunteers. They get the volunteers ahead of time. It's not an issue. This is ran by a different group, and this group, it's a hit or miss. Um, either the race is amazing or has a lot of work. And I will say this is one of those races that's always historically needed a lot of work when it came to when it comes to the aid stations. So I will say this, and that actually kind of was part of how I did. It kind of determined a little bit of how I did when it came to this race, because I, I said this, I've said it multiple times yesterday until I was blue in the face. They could have afforded to have one more aid station. It didn't even necessarily need to be manned all the way where they at least had it, where you could pour or whatever, something like that. Um, Where between miles five and seven and a half, um, because by then it was warm, warm, and 
Yes, on the way back, we are walking towards lake, the lake and stuff. We're, we're running, running, walking, wherever, tor back towards the, um, not towards the lake, but well, on the, closer to the lake along Soldier Field. Sorry, hold on one moment. Okay, sorry. I had to sneeze out of nowhere. So anyway, yeah, they could have just, it, it would have been nice if they would have had another aid station there. And um, how I did, my goal was to do the race. I knew I wasn't going to do the time that I did last year because, again, I already gave you the preface of that. Um, recovering from an injury, ankle still isn't quite right, all this other stuff. And I ended up um, doing under two hours, and that was the goal, I, but barely. Um, I probably could have pushed a little bit harder, but I also just wasn't, I didn't want to chance it because this week, so Monday, tomorrow, is the start of my 50K trail um, tra training. So I actually officially start my training for the 50 K tomorrow. Um, I think I said I was starting it earlier than that, but I switched training plans. And so the training plan I'm going with now, it will be tomorrow where I start. So I didn't want to chance it by like racing hard, even though I know I'm not going to make the time that I did last year because I'm not in shape. I'm not in that shape. So there's that. Um, but anyway, um, so the race was good. It was fun. Megan Split Queen won her age group, killed that. I knew she was. Won her age group, which is a large, this is a large Chicago race. And she won her age group. If that tells you anything, it should tell you a lot. Anyway, um, also she met some of my friends. We ended up like hanging out a little bit because it was a beautiful day. It was such a beautiful day. Um, and then afterwards, then we got hungry. And one of my other friends is part of the same group that we we're all hanging out with. Um, we were all going to hang out later on that evening. And he doesn't live on the same side of town as the rest of us. Like um, all of us, for the most part, a lot of us live on the north side. And so getting to the event that we were going to was on the north side, so it was a non-issue. He's the only one who lives on the south side. So I was like, do you just want to come up with us and we do brunch? You could come to brunch with us. Like, we don't have a problem with that. He's like, you sure? I was like, no! We're all trying this restaurant for the first time. So the restaurant that we tried, and I will highly recommend, I'll post that here for you, is Breakfast on, I mean, Tiffany on Broadway. And that brunch was bussing. It was good. It was so good. Um, I am gonna post the pictures of what we all had. Cause I asked like, hey, may I take pictures of your stuff? Cause I wanna plug the crap out of this restaurant. Because it is like a Latin fusion restaurant, Latin American, a Latin slash American food fusion restaurant. And that food, that food was hidden and it's BYOB. So you can bring your own libations, liquid libations and libate if you want, you know, have the libations be libating for you if you want, you know, along with some good food. And this is not that, like, this is in my hood. I was like... This restaurant's in my hood. I mean, it's not quite, it's in the hood over, but like I live right by the other hood that it's in. So I was like, I can walk here? Oh, stop playing. I'm going, I'm coming here regularly. So this might be my regular brunch spot. I ain't gonna hold you. It was just like that good. And the dinner selection looked decent too. So I'm going to check them out for dinner as well. But anyway. We went there, the food was amazing. And then because it was such a nice day, I was like, let's walk around the lake. And um, our other friend's suggestion, he's like, so, cause he wanted to walk around the lake and kind of decompress a little bit. So suggested, hey, there are some cool murals in this neighborhood if you want to walk around, look at the art murals. And so he won. Cause as soon as he said the lake, I was like, yeah, you are right, let's go to the lake. <laughs> so we walked to the lake. Um, kind of just people watch for a little bit, got a nice stroll, also walked off that food because the way we all kill that food, left no crumbs behind. I mean, I kind of did leave a little bit behind because it's oh, like, if you saw what I had, because I had, um, I had uh, chicken and waffles, that was filling. Even after running a 10 miler, that was still filling. So I couldn't, 
yeah. Uh, anyway, so we walked it off, and then afterwards, it was like, okay. Um, we looked at times like, okay, Paul, oh, like um, Mega Split Queen, it's about time. Like, isn't this about time you want to get ready to go? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we walked back to my car, and then I drove us back. He walked to where he was meeting us at, and we got to it. Anyway, after that, basically, I cleaned my place a little bit. Uh, Mega Split Queen got cleaned up i got cleaned up and then i and then sent her on her merry way i parked my car back into my spot and then after that or my lift head to mayfest mayfest is a cool fun festival that is um in the ravenswood area and there's two breweries that are right next to each other that have all the brews and all the, the all the all the things and they have live music it's a fun time we pretty much stayed the whole entire time. So I got there probably around, I want to say, 3.45. And I was there the whole entire time. Which I think they closed at 10, so that wasn't too bad, actually. But I was there the whole entire time. And mind you, I was eating snacks and food because um, we already knew this was going to be a thing. All of our running groups. So there's technically a, a combination of three different running groups that were all hanging out amongst our group. Um, because a lot of us are in more than one running group. <laughs> like, for example, the two running groups that were there, I'm part of two of them. Like, I'm part of, like, the beer drinking running club, which is McKellar, and then I'm also part of the Rogue Runners. So that's two running groups right there. And then um, NCS is another running group that was there, and then the Universal Soul people are also there, too. So it was like a... It was like a uh, a mixture of multiple running groups all hanging out for one purpose, for one purpose only. And that was to have a good time. And that we did. We did. It was a fun time. We laughed. We cried because my one friend, the one who came with us to brunch, we were having us a moment because when it comes to our dating history, it's kind of similar. And so we were relaying on that kind of thing. And it was beautiful. It was such a good time. And then we danced the night away because um, so two of the bands towards the end got woke woke us back up because we were like we kind of were like you know the day was like this ebbs and flows and so we were like this when this other band popped up and this band started doing like the um, early two thousands rock stuff you know cool stuff fun fun stuff that gets gets you back up and then the last band in eighties. And I'm an 80s girl. I'm an 80s baby. And the way you will get my attention and the way I will think I'm at a karaoke contest fighting for my life to win some money, play some 80s music. And the reason why I say that exact reference is I'm not going to hold you. That was literally how I got through college also. So my college years... I would, besides working my multiple jobs and going to school full time because I'm crazy, I also, on my spare time, would have side hustles. <laughs> and I've had two side hustles during my college years. One was promo model. So I would um, basically do promo model work um, to make extra money. Um, back when Craigslist was a thing was actually how I got these jobs, which looking back, that's kind of questionable, but always worked out to my favor because I always had the right connects to make sure that the job was legit. Um, <laughs> and I had a close friend that like kind of hooked me up to that idea. And she was like, hey, I, I can, you know, even though she was doing it in another state, I was doing the same thing. Um, and then the other side hustle that I had that I did a lot of too was... Um, I went into karaoke contest and won. <laughs> because for those who don't know, I was in choir from like fourth grade all the way to like 19. And I wasn't just in like my church choir. I was also in a community choir that I had to audition for. I also have tried to audition. I've also auditioned and um, did a show to try to get a record contract. Okay, glad that didn't work out because I do not want to be in that devilish industry. But your girl, when I say I have a range, I have 
you, 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 me, 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 us, 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 rage. Anyway, <laughs> not to toot my own horn, but I just had to do that real quick. So that's what, what was given though towards the end of the night. And it was such a good, 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 good day. I am still riding the wave of that day. I got home at a respectable time. I showed up home and then I um, met up with my, so as I was showing up home to my neighbors um, in the building, we're showing up home at the same time. And one of my neighbors who I'm kind of close to, she was like, you seem a little tipsy. I'm like, I, I am. She's like, did you just come from Mayfest? I was like, yeah. She's like, I was there earlier. I was like, I, I thought I saw you, but I wasn't sure. I was like, you probably did. <laughs> and I didn't recognize her either because she was looking like, you know, looking good. And so we're just like, well, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. And you got home safely. I was like, that, that's right. I didn't drive, you know. That's one thing that's beautiful about Chicago. That's like a non-issue. Like, if you can't afford a lift, there's public transportation. If depending on where you're at, you also could just walk home. <laughs> like, you know, there's just, they, there's options anyway. But yeah, so it was such a good evening. I woke, uh, I got plenty of sleep because I was tired all throughout the day yesterday. I wanted to take a nap so bad. It never worked out for me, but I made up for it by getting a very good night's sleep last night. And then now I'm about to get ready to do this massage. But that was pretty much how things went. And I think um i'll kind of give a recap so i think overall the race even though it wasn't it wasn't perfect i enjoyed it i'm gonna do it like i do every single year um oh side note the commemorable things so the shirt was awesome so a lot of people did the race because of the shirt because it was like you know the 20th anniversary and then also we got this cool blanket and I will show you the blanket. Um, yeah, I'll show you the blanket in the video. It, it was really, really cool. Um, but the reason why I do the race every year, because I, I, I don't think I ever broke it down. Besides it being the, the one of the first major races I did in Chicago, I do it also because it's a good gauge. Um, because it's so early in the season, right before marathon training starts for most people, for those who are doing fall marathons, or even if you're doing a fall half, um, it lets you know, or ultra, really any of the long, long distance, it lets you know where you're at. To me, it's like a base training race. You can either race race it, or you could use it to figure out where you're at base, baseline wise. So I literally use this race as a baseline race. It lets me know, should I aim to do more of an advanced training program to get faster and go more of a time focused goal? Or should I dial it back and do more of like an intermediate novice um, combination? Because I never don't, I never do novice all the way because you know, I've been running too long where that's not gonna do anything for me. I always do like something, I always like, uh, um, I, you, I, I usually tailor my own plans where I make it work for me, where it's a combination between a novice and um, intermediate plan, because I don't just run. Um, for those who just run, I think the training plans are wonderful and you can just keep it how you keep it, especially if you're using the Hal Higdon like I do. Myself, I don't do that because I usually have other things going on at the same time. Like for example, you already know I do yoga. I already decided though, and I even shared that in the video or um, one of the videos a while ago, I'm going to not do yoga for the rest of the summer. So you're not going to get any more new yoga videos. Um, so you're not even going to, I thought about doing one last one before this one, but I think I just need to be done with it and focus on my running and getting my running back in check. Um, and then, um, because run, at the end of the day, for those who don't know, running is my first love. I mean, given the name of this channel. It's my first love. Um, all the other things I do is to support running. Um, and then I also need to make sure I still keep my strength training in so that I don't injure myself. And then also this summer, I think I've already mentioned this to people. I already mentioned this on the channel. I'm also doing a couple of triathlons. So that also means now I'm going to add cycling and swimming 
into my weekly routine along with bouncing everything else I'm bouncing out. So therefore, for example, when it comes to like a lot of these training programs is calling for you to run five times a week. I don't have the liberty of doing that. Like I don't, if I was to run five times a week and then add all the other things to what I'm doing, that would be, I would be overtraining severely. So, um, one of the easier runs, I almost always drop that one off and make it where I run four times a week and then do the other things too. So that is a plan. But this race helps me figure out what to do as far as that concern, if it makes sense or not. Um, so that's the reason why I do the race. If I find another race that's a similar distance, and maybe if I go out of town and do another race that's similar to that, I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to use it as a gauge to figure out if I'm in a good spot or not. Similar to how people do spring half marathons, they figure out if they're in good shape for the, you know, their fall marathon or whatever they're doing. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Um, I am also probably going to do another Get Fit With Me series presents accountability as well. And y'all already know this, my cats have made themselves quite at home. Look at Zero. He's finally comfortable with the camera. Um, he's probably just wanting to hang out with me. He didn't get to hang out. He didn't get enough solo time with me this weekend. Um, I've been gone. So, but he'll get time with me to, today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. Because I took Tuesday off as well. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.